what we are talking about here is form validation, form element validation. Uh, so here's this issue uh, created by my colleague Gabor a while ago. Um, and this is specifically about uh, client side validation for form elements. But actually, um, as you may know, uh, there is no real validation feature for form elements in form elements. Uh, if you want to uh, validate them even on the server side, you have to do that from a workflow. Um, yeah, uh, which works, uh, but obviously this could be a, a bit better. And uh, what I will demo now is a solution for that. It actually wasn't uh, wasn't developed by me, but by Spike. Uh, he, he is from China. Um, he goes by the by the name Spike here, and he uh, wanted to take over that um, that task. And uh, while he is doing that, um, the Atomic are actually sponsoring this, so that's why I'm here demonstrating demonstrating it. And secondly, why not? It's not he doing the demo, is because uh, yeah, his his spoken English is not that good. Uh, but when it's about writing code, uh, you will see that uh, it's quite good. So what he did here is uh, pretty much a complete form validation workflow, uh, form validation implementation. Uh, so, um, as you can see, this is this is for Orchard Core um, in the form module. Um, it's just in a in a fork now. So, this is a complete uh, form validation implementation with this um, validator.js library. The, this is a pretty nice library. It has a lot of a lot of uh, built-in validators, which we of course can uh, execute as global methods even on the server side, and we can execute. Well, as JavaScript on the client side. So uh, we can use this to have validation for form elements uh, with one rule, both on the client side and both on the uh, on the server side in a user configurable way. So uh, what we have here, uh, this is just uh, set up with, uh, with the blog recipe, but that doesn't really matter. Um, what we have here is a quick installation with a couple of forms that demonstrate how to use that. Here we have this simple test form, which is, as you may have guessed from the name, a simple form for testing. And uh, well, it, what it does is uh, there's some blah, blah, blah. It posts to a workflow, by the way, uh, what I will also show you. And it has just uh, two input elements here that demonstrate some validation rules. And as I said, there are a couple of built-in validation rules in that validation.js or validator.js library. So apart from setting up the, the input field here, we also have this validation type field now here. So uh, you can select from a couple of built-in uh, validation rules, as well as this matches one, which is using regex. Uh, but of course, if you want to if you have a problem and you want to solve it with regex, now you have two problems as, as the old joke goes, but still, uh, of course, that's the most powerful. Uh, still, uh, there are a couple of other validators and of course this can be extended as well, uh, if necessary. But here uh, we are just using this isint, which will, of course, check whether the, uh, the input value is an integer. Uh, we can also further add some options which are available for some of the validators. Uh, as documented uh, on the library. And you can also add a custom validation message um, or you can just leave it blank and uh, the, default, the default message will be shown. Uh, similarly, we have another field here which uses the contains validation, which is of course uh, checking whether the, the text contains the given text and now, as you can see, we are actually using these validation options and the text will be demo. And we are also using the validation message field here. So um, this is the validation message we will show. So uh, let's actually try this out. I will now go to the front end. And yeah, uh, if I try to submit it, we'll get the validation message still on the client side for the integer one. Yeah, let's add an integer. Now the validation message is gone. And we also see the custom validation message for the contains one, which of course will still remain there if I'm writing something here, which is not demo. Uh, but if I add demo, 
we can submit the form and our workflow we run. Um, speaking of which, uh, that's doing the, the server side validation. So if I go back to workflows, you will see that we have a test workflow here. Um, uh, the first one is uh, just, a, uh, just an HTTP request, a standard HTTP request uh, um, task or event. And next is the main points, this validation rule form um, uh, task, which runs all the validation rules uh, for the form. And it has two outcomes, one for uh, where validation succeeded and one for where validation didn't succeed. So uh, that's, that's the, uh, these are the main, import, main uh, points. Um, you can define validation rules for each field uh, and those will be actually executed both on the client side and on the server side. And of course, there are a lot more, but here's this complete test form that demonstrates all of them. You see that there's a lot of um, input validation going on here which works the same way, but well, I wouldn't wouldn't go all through all of this because uh, there's not much point. So uh, that's it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so what do you think? Good. Can you show us the the full example? This one on the on the editor just to see how it looks like. I'll comment. Yeah. Uh, can which you, one would can you, you like? Yeah, whatever. I just want the full. Uh, I Big think, um, well, let's this check one. out this one. <laughs> There's nothing interesting, I think, because this is just okay. So if you open the drop down here, there is a is date and there is click. Can you see the drop down still? Yeah, can you click uh, on, on the drop down? Uh, yeah, I, I did that, so you can't no. see. I'm just, <laughs> no, we are just seeing the. Okay, no. then there then is nothing okay. dropping down. <laughs> Try it again. It's, it's not sharing that apparently, uh, but you can see the, the whole list here. Uh, and by the way, there's also documentation included. Uh, but here's the here's the whole list now. Uh, okay. You can see from the names. So, so my first comment would be like, why is the technical value in the drop down like is divisible by validate? Why not a nice message? Is space divisible space by? Uh, well, uh, could it be? I mean. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> yes, and, this is the first version. And, yeah. and then it could even be translated this way. Yeah, uh, that can actually be done. So, um, there's nothing preventing that. Um, okay. This was just uh, the easiest Good. to Then find. my second comment is about the validation options. So it's like a generic text field where you can put anything. <laughs> and, and some of them, so and there is only one field, it's called validation options. So my concern is that some of the fields that don't require any validation option and we still see the text box, so it could be confusing. And second, it's not obvious what we can type in it, which is related to the first point. And maybe like in this case, it's regular expression. Maybe it would be, be great if we could say regular expression instead of validation options. I don't know how much complex it makes the, the whole thing, but it's, it's, it's kind of weird to, to have just generic text box and you don't know what to type in it. When you see the value, it's, it's obvious. Or maybe, uh, I don't know how, if, if it could be configured because I assume the validators are not uh, open-ended, there is a list of 20 of them. So maybe it would be interesting to have a dictionary of samples for each of the validation type, just to pre-fill with some uh, gray text what you can type or have a name of the field so it, it changes the name of the option instead of having a generic text. Yeah, um, I, I think these are all good ideas. Uh, of course, this was the, the easiest to implement the first time uh, because there's a there is a lot of uh, a lot of variety here indeed. So yeah, uh, this is a bit indeed clunky that way. Uh, it's very um, developer focused, you know, it's not for an ordinary yeah. person. But um, it's still, it's not blocking, but I mean, even for a developer, it's not obvious. Like I'm a developer, I don't know what to type in it, right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, you would need to, you, uh, to read the you, documentation about yeah. it. So if we can help like, oh, you don't need to type, type anything, then don't show me the text box. Or if you need to type an integer, just show me an integer and I will type an integer. That's just, just the idea. Um, uh, how, uh, how, how does it work on the server side? So is it just 
a C sharp implementation of the same validation? Um, yeah, um, ju just a sec. I, I wanted to to show that there is some uh, some documentation about this actually. So, well, it's still uh, not as simple uh, as it could be. So, uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, there are actually uh, uh, there's actually some documentation. Oh, there are typos here uh, on what you can do and what you uh, what you should fill out. What makes it a bit more complicated um, still is that for some of these validation rules, uh, there are more complex options available as well, as it is provided by the uh, by the JavaScript library. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure in the JavaScript we could have a a static object with name, description, and sample filled once, like com containing like some kind of this documentation, but in the JavaScript, such that when you select an option, you have a nice name and it's pre-filled with some example that you can type. Then you can go to have more, to more information and documentation, but at least you don't have to go to the documentation every time you, it's an easy fix, I think. It's an easy change just to add a custom set of metadata in the JavaScript to, to have that. Uh, yeah, and, um, and I like the example idea. Uh, that's probably, that speaks, speaks the most. What's the name um, of, the, of the thing when it's grayed in the, in the in the text field. Sorry? There is a name. What is the technical name of something that is grayed out just as a central Place, value? A placeholder. 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 Thank yep. you. Uh, Can I ask yeah. a, a question, Zoltan? Sure. Because um, I saw the, the PR. Um, can you actually write JavaScript in the, in, in the field that you've got? there back on your field can you can you write javascript or can you just choose the functions that are provided by the libraries um you can't write javascript um it's just uh well just these pre-selected uh, validators okay how come you're using global methods here then which are javascript well maybe maybe that's just or maybe i'm just a bit confused when i saw the pr is because i you would assume that if using global methods and gent that you could also actually write other combinations of javascript yeah uh well uh we could um what, a, we could what about having you have is after is before one not is anything or is javascript and the options contain javascript i don't know um well uh, at least one option could be a javascript free form um well that's still very very technical but uh, but we are already uh, talking about developers so that would open up uh, some possibilities as well i think yeah i mean it it, it appears from the library that it, it's not really a, a freeform style library it's it's got a set of specific rules which is is i think why seems saying it makes sense to make those rules a bit more visible and, and well described in the in the UI. Um, and I, I just I wasn't sure whether or not you could write JavaScript in it when I saw it, which is why I was wondering why I was using JavaScript on the server side to actually do the validation. Because yeah, it's that, not using that, it's not using the library, is it? That's weird. That that's unnecessary. It's just a switch case. It doesn't require JavaScript at all here on the server side. Yeah, that's actually right. Um, yeah, uh, this was this was modeled after the, the library, so it's uh, pretty much the same logic. But yeah, this could be just plain C sharp indeed. If it was loading the same JavaScript library, yes, you will invoke the same method name. But it is not because I see that there are custom methods. That and be careful here. I see daytime try parse invariant culture. And I think it should be the, the request culture. Because I assume that everything in the forms expect the user to enter the date as their own culture and not the invariant culture. Yeah, just, um, uh, just a comment. Just it's a, something that go in the PR comments, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, it that's should be invariant indeed. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks for the feedback. Uh, all very good. But that's uh, nice. It's, it's very important, I think, for forms to be validated in the front end. So.
Yeah, um, um, yeah it, it looks really good. Absolutely. Um, it makes sense now, having seen it as well. It's like you can understand what it's what you can do in the front end, um, which is really good to have to be kind of less developer focused and, and just more a bit more usable for actual users to put some some things in. Yeah, and it's um, it's probably easier to have uh, validation configured uh, for each form field versus for the whole form from workflows. Uh, so I think. Uh, uh, such an approach is, is better usable. All right. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the feedback. Feedback. Can you uh, can you go back uh, on the global method? I just want to check something. I was looking at the source code portrait. Uh, the the one with the server side validation that you shared here. So, go up. Add the class name. Um, sorry, say again. You should go up to the class name. All right. Okay. So, and I assume this validation validate rule method. Okay. So, if it's registered as singleton, that's fine. Okay. I just wanted to check how often the global methods were instantiated, and I had to check in Orchard source code how we did that. That is good. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Good. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will ask Mike to to open a. Uh, a PR under the, the official repo as well, and there we can continue. Awesome.